Okay, we centered the panel where we wanted it, and what we found out is, is that the front of the trailer has a slight curve. So what, on this side, it needed to be bent out a little because the whole the outside edge was not hitting and also the front edge was a little further away so what we did is we got channel locks put some tape on it to kind of help protect the aluminum a little bit and then we bent it and we did it on both sides and then you can see we set it down it's got a very slight but that VHB tape, after we stick it down, it'll hold it down. And then I'm using a turnabon tape on top of that. So it's got double protection from lifting. So, but you want to try to get this as flat as you can. The back one is fine. Both back ones were fine. The other side, the front edge by itself was lifting, but on this one, this outside so it's curved a couple directions on this side every trader is going to be slightly different so you have to center it up on on the roof where you want it mark it we have it pencil marked so we know where it goes and then what we're doing is bending these flanges so that when i go and put the bhp tape stick it down it's going to be right where it goes it's going to be flat and that bht b tape will stand a chance of working I don't think I'm gonna stick it on today because it's supposed to rain this afternoon but I think and the VHB tape cannot get wet for a day or so so I think I'm gonna wait till Wednesday morning and then put the VHB tape on glue this down and and we'll we'll get this all going but I just wanted to show you how that works so thank you Armando and we'll uh continue doing this later good morning youtube i've got the solar panel pretty much ready for install and it's a new poa solar panel 100 watt and the specs are here and what i'm doing is what i did is uh, the panel, when you first get it, it's got cardboard all around it. You take the cardboard off, and then on the sides, the uh, it's got slots to mount the feet already drilled, and I recommend using those. And use the uh, it takes a ten millimeter socket and a wrench to put these on, and you put the bolt on through from the bottom flat washer, lock washer, nut. And then I have some blue Loctite to even kind of double secure the nut so it can't vibrate off. I have the 3M um, VHB tape mounted on these feet. Preparation is the key. Uh, they recommend a, a very fine abrasive uh, clean it off and clean the surface with alcohol and then stick it down and then securely press on this VHB tape so that it sticks very well to the feet and also uh, the same thing applies for the surface you need to clean the surface really well on the trailer and then uh, wash it down with rub it down with alcohol so it's very clean and then the vhp tape needs to sit undisturbed for at least 24 hours i'm going to be using the vhb tape plus a turnabon tape on top to doubly give me even more strength in holding the panel down um there are all kinds of videos online about people mounting uh, solar panels on campers with VHB tape and they don't have any trouble with it. So you can you can look that up and check. There's a bunch of them. Uh, and I'm doing it the same way. So I'm not drilling any holes in the top of the camper. 
and the solar wires I'm running through the vent, uh, the vent pipe, the front vent pipe in the closet, because everything's going to come down into the closet and all my connections are going to be made in there as well. So I'm showing you this is all prepped, ready to go. And um, we're going to install this this morning and get it uh, glued down to the top of the trailer. And then I can hook up all the rest of my wires and stuff and we can uh, get it operating. So I believe that's it. I'll post a link to, I'll have links to all the supplies that I use for this. But Michael Hadley handily uh, posted a link to this uh, solar panel on Cosita Life a while back and the point what the point he made was is this panel fits up on the flat area behind the max fan well in front of the max fan and before you get to the bathroom vent and it does it fits just right and even these are on the side. Uh, the feet work better on the side. You have to bend these just a little to conform to the roof on the side, but not much. So, and that's what you want, where you just alter these a little, and then they'll stick down flat and give you a solid uh, mounting surface for the, for the feet to mount to the fiberglass. So... Um, and then, as far as the wiring and all that goes, I had a discussion with Terry and Josh of Little Hum on the Road. And I was explaining that I wanted to put a solar panel in. And I was explaining how I was going to do it. And their suggestion was that I was overcomplicating it. And I needed to just run the wire down into the closet, put the charge controller, and just hook up in the closet and I'd be done. So that's actually what we're gonna do. It's a very simple install. It's one of the simpler installs I've seen. So, and uh, and we decided that this is a 100 watt panel and we're not gonna be running our air conditioner with this bat with our current battery or this panel. And that's not the intention. Um, we do have a 140 watt ZAMP panel that we have used on trips and we have one Battleborn 100 amp hour lithium battery and we've kind of kept track of how we use our power and we have decided that we don't need lots of space batteries or solar power at this point. I mean, maybe someday we'll do something else where we can, you know, run our air conditioner while boondocking, but that's not what we're going to do now. This particular panel, the benefit is, is that it will assist the car in charging while we're going down the road. And when we stop somewhere, whether it's, uh, you know, stopping to eat dinner or it's stopping uh, or we're boondocking at a Cracker Barrel or whatever, this solar panel will continue to operate uh, as long as there's sun. So what will happen is our battery will be having some charge going into it virtually all the time. So... When, and so it, it and we do boondock uh, quite a bit. So what it will allow us to do is have some charge going back into the battery, and if we need additional charge going into the battery, we can get our 140 watt ZAMP panel, plug it in, and we'll have both panels um, uh, putting back into the battery. So we would have 240 watts going into the battery instead of just the 100 with this. But I decided that I wanted to try to see if we liked this arrangement 
where we're getting a little bit of solar gain while driving down the road and parked in places and that sort of thing. And then it will, it'll just assist. It'll be adding uh, solar power to the battery whenever, like basically all the time. So that's the idea. And I appreciate all the help I got with from Michael and from uh, Josh and Terry. They, uh, I, I love going up there and, and talking to those guys. And uh, I learn something new every time I go up there. Okay. Okay, let's set it down where the marks are. It's right I'm there. I'm about a quarter. Hold on. Are you, is it there? Is it there? You're a little... Well, I'm, I'm about 116. Okay. okay. That's about right. About right right there? Okay. Yeah, that's close. I mean, I could come this way a little. About a 16. That'll do it. Out of the line right here. Yeah, that's about what I am. Okay. Something like that. All right. Okay. So what I'm thinking is, like, I'll lift this side. Okay. You hold, you hold that side. I'll lift this side, peel off the covers. I've already treated these with alcohol. Okay, got both of them off. Okay. Okay, now raise your side up. Peel those off. Got it? Okay. Okay. Drop it down. And push. <clears throat> you there? Yeah. Good enough. Okay. It's where it's gonna go. Okay. We need to push real hard. You wanna hit it with something? Hmm? I, I don't think we need to hit it. Okay. How come there's water up on top of here? must have got water in my hands. Hmm. Feels good right there. So you're going to put another tape on top of this? Yeah. A, I'm a turnabon. It's a real sticky tape. It's going to go on top and it'll like double, double secure it. Okay. Thank you. One more thing about drilling this hole. What I did, and I'm gonna seal this up with like silicone, I think, and just kind of seal it all around. 
with silicone so there's no gases leaking from the vent into the closet. Um, I used like a 5 8 drill bit and did it straight at first and then drilled at an angle up so that when the wires come down they kind of have a slot they it's an elongated hole so it's easier to get the wires out instead of having to bend them 90 degrees so it's it help it's helpful to have a little bit of a hole and then drill it at an angle and that will help you because when the wires come down they'll be able to kind of just slip out so that's a little tip for that and how I did it and then I'll just seal that up and it'll be all good okay I'm gonna go over the stuff that we did we set the uh, panel up and got it glued with the VHB tape to the roof and I've got a couple of sets of clips set and I ran we ran the wires down the vent and I undrilled those with a 1 8 inch bit drilled out the rivets took off the cap we had to use a fish tape to get go down and then we tied a chain to it pulled it up then hooked the wire pulled the wires down we we uh, we felt like we had to do it that way because we had a hard time going up the other way. So we're gonna, I gotta, we're mounting the sol solar controller and hooking it up. And then I'll get these lines shortened where they need to be and, uh, and we'll cut them off inside. I'll show you what we did. So that's the upper part. So inside, I drilled an angled hole in the vent pipe so that the wires could come out at an angle. And then I got a board and I just, with the Katie's closet in here, it has a base. The logical place to mount the uh, charge controller, if you have a Katie's closet, is on the back side of this but we have a shoe nook here we have a shoe nook under here see it's an opening and if I put the charge controller there, the shoes would hit the charge controller, so I don't want that. So in our case, I'm going to do it a slightly different way. I'm, I'm mounting it to this board, and I'm going to put something in here to keep this to where it keeps from bouncing. And then these wires are going to attach to this vent pipe and turn up and connect. This is the wires from the panel. And before I do that, I have to get my power wires from the trailer. So all we're going to do is run power wires down and connect up into the same places where this light, where the light kit connects to the trailer. So it's going to be wired to the trailer wires and um, just like the light kit is. There is already a 10 gauge wire that goes from here all the way around to your battery. So we don't have to run any wire over to the battery at all at all because it's already there. And we use those 10 gauge wires when we put in this light. So we're going to do the exact same thing. Going to connect it to that. So I've got this screwed on. Now the next step is to run my power wires down under there, connect them up, hook them up to the solar controller, and those have to be connected first. Then you can hook up the wires from the solar panel uh, to make it work. So that's what I'm gonna do, that's what I'm working on. So we're gonna hook it up. 
I uh, just want to bring you up to speed of where I'm at currently and then we'll just keep going okay I want to explain exactly what I did here um, the I'm going to talk about the wiring convention that I used to wire this up uh, in the solar world red is positive and black is negative so and when you buy solar cables with the um, connectors already made up on them they're usually red and black and the red one is always on the uh, the red one is always positive and the black one is negative so when you hook it up to your controller where the on mine it's a PV um, which is right here in the middle the red one has to be in positive and the black one in negative the other thing that's important at least with this controller and it's probably all controllers is you have to hook the power to the battery first so I have some silicone wire I bought 10 gauge silicone wire that I bought and what we're doing here is we're hooking up to the 10 gauge wire that already runs back to the battery I didn't have to run any other additional wires that's one of the reasons this is a simple uh, solar install because we're not having to run uh, additional wires back to the battery we're using the wires that Cosita already provided so the way I did this was I have the light kit and when we put the light kit in we use a three connector Wago on the white wire which is our ground in the casita the casita uses white as a ground and black as a hot so it's a it's a little different it's reversed a little bit well almost the in in the solar world the black is hot i mean the black is ground and in the casita world the black is hot so the, don't get them mixed up keep your I decided to keep the convention exactly the same everything coming from the controller to the panels and to the power keep it the same so my black wire I put a a, 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 a ring terminal on the red wire and I hooked it to the fuse this is the fuse that the electric jack uses and basically that's hooked up to the black wire of your casita the big the biggest black wire that's what it uses for power and then the biggest white wire is the ground and so I have my black silicone wire going to ground and then and then I've got the 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 two big ground wires in the casita they're hooked up to this and then my wire for my lights is uh, that's the ground for the lights it's a negative side of the lights so what I bought is a five unit Wago instead of a three unit Wago and I basically just swapped it out and added the silicone wire to that and that's how I wired my power and then you bring the power up hook it here on the left side to power and then hook your red wire to the positive side your black wire to negative side that needs to be on first to make this work then you hook up the solar side of it and the red wire is hot and the black wire is negative again and you uh, you hook you that runs up to the roof hooks up to the solar panels and makes everything work makes your solar system work so that's how I did the wiring for this solar install 
and um, and I have a shoe nook in here so I wind up I had to cut an access because I I actually didn't have an access uh, previously uh, to get in here because I actually didn't necessarily plan on getting in here but I'm I've been I added the light kit and then I now I'm adding solar and it's easier to work on it and show it while I'm um, while I'm uh, working on stuff it's easier to have that open so that's the wiring convention I'm gonna make a panel for this so that's one of the things I'm gonna do now and um, and then there's only other couple other things I need to do to finish up the solar thing completely but so that's what I wanted to tell you if you have any questions let me know um, I think that's it and this morning everything worked perfect charge battery right back up after I unplugged it so it's all working great okay I'll well we'll see you in the next portion of this video okay now that we've got the wires run I need to put the rivets back in to hold this down and then you cover the rivets with silicone like they did here so using an eighth inch rivet and eight by I think it's five eighths um, I'm gonna stick it in the hole There we go. I'm going to do the one over here, I think. Got it. There you go down tight that's good now I'll have just have to silicone all over the top of this to keep it from leaking uh, next step is we're going to put uh, a turnabond tape on top of these to make it doubly secure down to the roof so it's got the BHB tape plus I'll have a turnabond on top Okay, the key to this is getting it clean. I've cleaned it with Simple Green, now I'm cleaning with alcohol. And I've cut the strips into eight inch strips and you cut with the utility knife. Scissors don't work well with the turnabond tape. So you rub the area down with alcohol. Getting it clean is critical. That's what makes the tape stick. Probably don't even need the, the uh, turnabond tape, but 
I decided to do it for double, double protection. I have a little mark and I have a roller. I'm going to roll it after I to getting the plastic off here is to wiggle it back and forth and then the clear plastic will loosen up on in the edge and then you can pull it off so that's how you get it off to stick it on so that I do the same thing four times and that gives us our extra protection I'll show you when I'm done